Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 show, chapter two. I'm your host, Ella Will, and this is episode 214. Um, I just wanted to come on here real quick with um, just a statement. And I really wasn't doing the show because I had a a lot of personal things going on, but I felt like this was necessary. This was important for me to, you know, come on my platform and discuss this topic. And I just want to thank everybody who had contributed and took time out their day to find my niece on Saturday. Um, It was really hard for me to know that she was missing and knowing what this country do to young kids, young girls and boys, it was a blessing that somebody um, knew her whereabouts. And I thank everybody who just supported my family You know, one thing about me is I don't act like I'm such a perfect person. I don't act like I'm invincible or that I'm invincible because I'm not. You know, we all have problems. We all go through things. We all go through situations in this life. And I was just going crazy, man, because... You know, I know my niece, and she's very fragile. She's very sensitive. She's very passionate about certain things, and but she's smart. She's a sweet little girl, man. Even though she's not my baby no more, she's a she's a wonderful human being. And I just couldn't fathom somebody who um, could have, like, you know, upset had her against her will, and it was a, it, it was a lot. But I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. I'm just letting everybody know, just from a standpoint of. When a child go missing, it's everybody's business. You know, we have this habit of minding our own business. And sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's not necessary. And kids go missing every day. But if I know a kid's missing, I'm going support. I'm going to lend my support. And it's just really serious nowadays. And we need to, as a society, as a community, we need to stick together. We need to um, work as a team to make sure that that child or children are returned to their home safely. And And it's crazy because like yesterday I was coming from work (laughs) and this little boy, man, he had to be like at least 12, 13 years old, was asking me if I can go to in the store and get him a Rello. And I told him, I can't even do that little homie and you shouldn't be smoking anyway. He's like, yeah, I know, man, but I'm going through a lot in my home. and, And I just told him like, look, it's better ways of working out your problems and I ain't gonna buy no um tobacco product for no minor anyway that ain't just how I roll but it's just that a lot of people you know see things and they walk away or they don't do anything about it because they feel like it's not their problem but at the end of the day it's all our problem we are 
have to hold ourselves responsible for how our kids turn out. And I understand that teenagers going to be teenagers and they think they know everything and think they've grown, but you just don't know what they're going home to and you don't know what their upbringing. And it's just really important that we come together as a community because this is our community. You know, how did the hood become the hood? And how um, a little boy became a street nigga or how did a little girl become a dot? You know what I'm saying? So we have to hold ourselves accountable. And just because I don't have any children, because I don't have any kids, um, everybody think I'm not entitled to my opinion or I don't have a right to insert myself in a situation, but I care about my community. I care way too much, but hey, I care. And it all starts with caring. It's all about just making sure that we prepare them for the future and making sure that we um, try to give them hope because I can relate and I can understand back when I was a teenager and stuff like that, even though it was like practically um, 18 years ago when I first became a teenager all the way to 18, I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what was going to happen at the high school. So a part of me would just freak out. A part of me was just scared if I was going to fail because I didn't have a father figure like that. But I just knew that I had to face it and I had to do my best. I had to try. And now at 34, I can reflect and look back on that and just pat myself in the back and say that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that you didn't give up, young self. I'm grateful that you took it upon yourself to figure things out. And I just want my niece to figure it out for herself because as much as I could talk to her and as much as I can instill in her that everything will be okay, I will never be no female. You know, I can only be her uncle. I can only be her man, you know, the, the man in her life, the positive role model that she needs. And I just remember when she was first born, you know, I used to, you know, hold her in my arms and just make sure that she was going to always be protected and that I was going to always be there. I, you know, I can't go back to being there like I used to because I have my own life. I have my own crib. I work. I pay bills and this and that. So I have to be there even if it's at a distance I have to be there but I have never abandoned anybody that I love and care about and regardless of what's being said what's being um, put out there to the masses smear campaign or whatever I'm telling you from my heart that when I love you, I will never get rid of you. I will never cut you off unless you get rid of me, unless you cut me off. But I have tried to, you know, be a good uncle. You know what I'm saying? I'm far from perfect. <laughs> you know, I was messed up for a few years because I was going through my depression. And I felt like I was a failure because I couldn't be strong for my nieces. And I didn't want them to see me like that. I didn't want them to see me battered and bruised and beaten and defeated. And I'm 
being honest right now. Because everybody on social media want to portray like they always had good times and they didn't. We all been through something. We all went through something. And we are going through something. And I'm not going to fake the funk. I ain't going to pretend like I don't have any problems or that I'm always there 100% because I'm not. I wasn't. And I do my show so I can help my family out. I don't do this show for no clout, for no attention, for no credibility, none of that. I do this show because it's from the heart. And I want to help people. And... I'm going to do my best to help my family. And I just don't want people to try to, you know, demonize me and just try to make it seem like I'm a liar and this and that because I'm not. (laughs) I'm far from a liar. Everybody who have known me for years and been in my house. You know what I'm saying? Even when I had on-the-spot interviews, you know what I'm saying? I always gave somebody something to drink or if they was hungry before we start this episode. You know, I'm such a caring person. Even if I never got it in return, even if um, I got stabbed in the back, I still remain a caring person, a good person because that's just how my mother raised me. And I just want everybody to understand that we have to make sure that our babies are okay and that they loved and that they um, safe. Because I will not want to be a teenager in these um, <laughs> um, trying times and this Today's climate, I would not want to be a teenager right now. So I just try to, you know, just make sure that I'm straight so everybody else around me can be straight. It's really hard being the only man in the family, in your family. It's really hard because everybody expects you to always deliver. And I can't always deliver. But I do my best. I do what's necessary. I do what's needed and I'm just trying to get to the next level so I can take everybody else to the next level but everybody isn't going to be able to go with me but the ones that are I can take them and bring them to the next level with me because I really want to help these kids out here I really want to help these um, teenagers and I really want to help these people who are considered the black sheep, the underdogs, and who have been through something and they get criticized for their past. And I just want everybody who watch me and they can see that I made it so I can make it too. And I'll be real about mine. So there's a lot of days where I feel hopeless. I feel undecisive. I don't know what to do. Weary, scared, afraid. But I make it happen. I keep pushing. And that's what people got to do. We just got to keep pushing. We just got to make sure that we can become the best that we can be and stay consistent on our goals and our dreams and our aspirations because at the end of the day you know we're the ogs now and just like i said in my last couple videos ago they're looking at us now and if they feel like that there's no hope for anybody else because it's, it's still a lot of old niggas out here playing out here in these streets, still playing, in their 30s and 40s, still playing. If they don't see anybody, um, like in our age group, in our age bracket, that's a dreamer, then they gonna always be a sleeper. And I'm not no sleeper. I dream. 
I dream like my life depends on it. Because I'm not going to let anybody be in control of my life because I'm in control of my life. Until God calls me home. I'm going to always be in control of my life. And in my life, all I can do is just try to be a good role model. A good um, philanthropist. A good businessman. A good son. A good brother. Grandson, Godson, all that stuff. But I'm just being William, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, we just have to make sure that us as adults, we just have to make sure that we're doing our part. It's not always about us all the time. And I just want. To thank everybody again, man, because a lot of people didn't have to do that, but everybody understood the assignment. And as long as the 1804 show, Chapter 2, remain, you will always have a place to vent and to discuss your experiences Cause we have fun over here. We be real over here, you know. Everybody who ever came on the show, just always love to come back. And I'm just grateful for this platform, cause this platform helped us found our baby. So thank y'all from the bottom of my heart, and keep on tuning in, keep on supporting me. I don't always have it together. I don't have all the answers, but I come from a good place. I come from the heart. But yeah, I'm going to get off here. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And the next history segment, the KFC segment, I know it's supposed to have been done it. But I'm going to make sure that I knock it out the park on Wednesday night. So be tuned. Stay blessed and peace.